Greetings, my friends. We have just explained and we have just answered the key question, who and what is God? Then on the other hand, the question is, another important question is indeed, who and what is Satan? The B-2 stealth bomber, an airplane developed by the United States government, is touted to be invisible to enemy radar. The plane supposedly can perform the ultimate disappearing act. Can it? Or do we know of an invisible enemy who has been around for millennia? wrecking havoc. He is Satan the devil, and although unseen, he is real. Or is he? You need to know, for an enemy you cannot see may be an enemy who does not exist, or he may be an enemy who not only exists, but is your most fearsome foe. If the Bible is our authority, then the answer is clear. Satan not only exists, he is a powerful, wicked spirit being. He was created perfect but became corrupted by sin. He is the invisible leader of all fallen angels, the unseen author of all evil, and the tempter, deceiver, and destroyer of humankind. Because Satan is a spirit and unseen, humanity has forged many false ideas about just how he must look. He is often imagined to be a short, skinny elf in red tights, uh, with pointed ears or horns, a barbed tail and a pitchfork in his hand. Sad to say, this erroneous mental cartoon of Satan's appearance seems so funny that many conclude he is but a harmless little creature on a par with the villain from a Walt Disney film. A few philosophical types of view Satan as a convenient but totally imaginary way to describe or personify all the evil in this world. Others have no use at all for the devil and consider him a total fake, pure and simple. But some religious people are downright openly afraid of the devil. They ascribe to him personally every bad thing that happens to them, be it a failed marriage or a flat tire on their car. Just what is the truth? Well, as usual, the truth we can find in only one source. There is, of course, there are other truths, there are half-truths in this world, but the source of the absolute truth is indeed found only in the Holy Scriptures in the Bible. So, what does the Bible say? Well, to begin, the Bible shows that three levels or classes of beings exist in the universe. The first class, men and animals, both composed of physical matter, make up one class. The spirit composed members of the God family, which at present includes God the Father and Jesus Christ, uh, the Gospel of John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 and verse 14, they are another class, the highest form of life. And the third class of being is the angels. Now angels are spirits, or spirit beings as it says in Hebrews 1 verse 7, who serve as God's helpers as he unfolds his plan for man, as we can read in verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 through 7 explains that man right now is lower than the angels. But man will eventually be set in authority over angels when he is finally resurrected as a spirit being. You can find it in verse 8 of the Hebrews 1 and also in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 3. Thus we see that angels are spirit beings of superior power and authority to men. They minister as God's servants in matters God directs. Now within the angelic realm, different ranks or stations of angels exist. Two that the Bible mentions specifically are the cherubim, Genesis chapter 3 verse 24, and the seraphim, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 2. We can conclude from biblical evidence that there are probably just two cherubim and that they hold special responsibility at God's throne. More on this in a few minutes. Some angels are righteous and are wicked. In Luke chapter 11 verse 26 we find that. These wicked ones, having sinned and been cast down, as we read in Jude verse 6 and Second Peter chapter 2 verse 4. These fallen angels, demons, have over them a ruler or prince or boss. His name is Satan, as plainly revealed in Matthew 9, verse 34, and Luke 11, verses 14 through 19. Exactly how did Satan come to his position as chief of the wicked spirits? Well, two main portions of scripture fill in 
the most important details. Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 15, and Ezekiel 28, verses 12 through 17. Isaiah 14 starts with a taunt against Babylon, which carried the nations of Judah into captivity. Verse 12, however, makes a literal jump into prehistory and begins to speak to the real power behind Babylon. Begins to speak about Satan the devil, here called Lucifer. Verse 12 exclaims that Satan was cut down. Verses 13 and 14 reveal that the thoughts of his heart had been to exalt his authority even above God's, actually to knock God off his throne. Verse 15 shows that these evil plans were ill-fated, for God was to bring him down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Now notice how these verses parallel Christ's statement that he beheld Satan fall like lightning from heaven, in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, and Peter's record that the demons were cast down from God's presence in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Continuing now in Ezekiel 28, we find more of the details. Ezekiel 28 opens with a prophecy against the ancient city of Tyre, a powerful seacoast kingdom in Palestine during Old Testament times. The prophecy against the entire city is couched in terms directed to the prince or ruler of Tyre, since the ruler is responsible in God's eyes for the sins of the city. But in verse 12, a complaint or cry is made, not against the prince, but against the king of Tyre. The language that follows makes it plain that no human being is spoken of here, but rather that the evil power behind the prince of Tyre, the king of evil, Satan the devil, is actually being addressed. Verse 12 shows Satan was created full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Verse 14 states that Satan was an angel of the type of rank of cherub. He had been at the very throne of God. Verse 15 says he had been created perfect, but that iniquity was found in him. Verses 16 and 17 indicate that his sins included vanity, covetousness, and selfishness. And before summarizing summarizing these two sections, it is helpful to briefly cite Revelation 12, verse 3 and 4. Here we see Satan, symbolized as dragon, having authority over one-third of the angels of heaven, who are called stars in this verse, in this section of the scripture. When we combine this with Isaiah and Ezekiel, the full picture emerges. Satan was a powerful and beautiful angel, a cherub, with high responsibilities, reporting directly to God's throne. He had apparently power over one-third of the angels. Most likely, the other two-thirds of the angels were under the direction of the other two, cherubim, Michael and Gabriel, probably. Although created perfect, Satan had the power of free choice. He chose to follow the way of vanity and covetousness that thus became corrupted. He tried to overthrow God, but was beaten back and thrown down to the earth, along with his angels, who became demons. A brief survey of the biblical names for Satan shows Satan's present role and his character. He is called a serpent in Genesis 3.1, the devil and Satan, Revelation 12, verse 9. He is also called the evil one in John 17.15 the angel of the bottomless pit, and Abaddon and Apollyon, which both mean destroyer, Revelation 9, verse 11. Baliel, he is called in 2 Corinthians 16, 15, and Beelzebub in Matthew chapter 12, verse 24. Though this may surprise many, the Bible clearly calls Satan the ruler of this world, in John 12, verse 31, and also calls Satan the god of this age, in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Now, of course, Satan is man's chief tempter. We see that in Mark chapter 1 verse 13 and Mark 4 verse 15, as well as in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5. Satan is the deceiver, not of the few, but of the whole world, Revelation 12, 9 and 2 Corinthians 11, 14. But how does Satan work? All those spirits can possess a person if given permission. This is not the usual way they tempt or attack. Now, all of us know how every person exudes a power of personality that radiates from him through his moods, emotions, and tastes. Thus, a person may be said to be the life of the party or the drag on the company. His or her influence seems infectious for the good or bad of others. 
Satan, a spirit being, is far more powerful than any human. He is also to, he is able to transmit, as it were, the attitudes or moods of rebellion, vanity and hate, and to infect others with these attitudes, just as truly as a sour person can dampen a party. And this influence occurs without physical contact. Satan is also able to fill one's heart, as it says in Acts chapter 5 verse 3. He transmits his evil moods and attitudes through the air, Ephesians 2, 2, much like radio waves travel through the air. Yes, we all have been deceived. But the greatest deception of all is the one many people now believe, that Satan doesn't exist in the first place, or if he does, that he is a harmless cartoon elf. The Bible states differently. Satan is a powerful evil being. His whole purpose, Christ said, is to steal and to kill and to destroy. John chapter 10 verse 10. Now here are some of the main Bible verses about Satan. Hebrews 1 verse 7 and Hebrews 2 verse 5 through 7. The role of angels is defined in those two scriptures. In Luke 11 27 and 2 Peter 2 and, and chapter, uh, chapter 2 and verse 4. As well as in Jude, uh, there's no chapter in Jude, it will be verse 6. So in Jude 6, we read, as well as in Second um, Peter 2, 4 and Luke 11, verse 26, we read that some angels are wicked and have been cast from God. In Matthew 9, 34 and Luke 11, verses 14 through 19, the leader of the fallen angels is Satan. Isaiah fourteen twelve. And uh, verse 13, 14, and 15, as well as Ezekiel 28, verses 12 through 17, the story is the story of Satan's rebellion. Once again, it's in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 15, and Ezekiel 28, verses 12 through 17. Revelation 12, 9, Satan deceives the whole world. John 12, verse 31, and 2 Corinthians 4, 4, Satan is called the ruler and god of this evil world. In conclusion, brethren, yes... America's stealth bomber may or may not succeed. But one thing is sure, Satan the devil, a hidden but powerful foe of humankind, is indeed the original and most deadly disappearing act of all time.